Welcome to Daily Prayer with the Sutton team on Wednesday the 16th of December. Evidence. As you may know, my dad died recently. I had the task of selling his car. I took it to We Buy Any Car. The advert that it only takes a few minutes is not quite accurate. Fair enough. You have to provide all the correct documentation such as the registration document. But there's also ev other evidence needed before you can actually sell the car. A very thorough visual inspection, proof of a recent MOT, service record, bank details, and so on. But as the car wasn't registered to me, there were several other documents that were needed as well. Lots of evidence to find and provide. Not that I'm complaining, that's just how it is. Have you noticed how often we're required to provide evidence to be eligible for so much in life? For various benefits, to get your money out of a bank or other financial institution, to prove you can travel to another country, to prove you can drive your car, to prove you can get married, to prove you were born, to log on to online sites and so on. And sometimes we want evidence from others. To prove the caller at the door is genuinely from the company they say they represent. To prove that food is safe to eat. To ensure that something we buy on the internet will be delivered. To prove that we are not being conned. Last Sunday we were thinking about the ministry of John the Baptist. He knew from early on in his life that God had a special role for him to carry out. He firmly believed that he was the herald who was to prepare people for the coming of the Messiah that God had promised to the Israelites. After he had baptised Jesus in the River Jordan, John continued with his own ministry and continued to have his own followers or disciples. But John got on the wrong side of Herod when he rebuked him for all the evil he was doing including marrying his brother's wife, Herodias. So John was put into prison. As John languished in prison, he began to question his life work. We read from Luke chapter 7, verses 18 to 23. The reading is taken from Luke chapter 7. John called two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases illnesses and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Despite his lifelong conviction in the work he believed God had given him to do, it now appears that John was having some doubts. He understood from the prophecies of Isaiah that the Messiah would release prisoners, and here he was, still in prison. Nor did Jesus appear to be judging the enemies of Israel or restoring King, King David's descendants to the throne. Was Jesus the Messiah after all? John was deeply disappointed. He had expected Jesus to be able to release him from prison. So he wondered who Jesus really was. Elijah? Another former prophet? A prophet in his own right? Or was he actually the Messiah? We too can sometimes doubt if God really is in control of our world. As we travel through life and come up against many problems we have to deal with, it can make us 
have doubts over what we believe. Why did God let this happen to me, or to someone I love, or to someone who was such a good person? Why does God not do something about all the evil that abounds in the world? And why does he let selfish, wicked people appear to thrive? And why isn't he acting to control the COVID-19 pandemic threatening us all this year? Questions like these were probably the reason that Luke chose to include this passage in his Gospel. He could see that many of the people who had spent time with Jesus and were doing their best to continue to spread his message were actually having a hard time. Many were being persecuted and even put to death. It is also a helpful passage for us today as we face the problems of life. So while John was in prison, he sent two of his own disciples to ask Jesus the question, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? I imagine that John was so certain of his call from God for virtually all his life. But now, when he finds himself in prison for speaking out against evil, he must have wondered if he really had had a call from God and if Jesus really was the one he was meant to prepare the way for. John must have felt alone and abandoned by the God he served, so desperate to know if his call had been genuine or if he had re misread what God wanted him to prepare the way for. So he asks his two disciples to ask Jesus if he was the Messiah. He wanted evidence. When these two met up with Jesus, they repeated John's earnest question. Jesus was busy curing the sick, casting out evil spirits, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, curing leprosy, making the lame walk, raising the dead and preaching the good news. His reply to John's disciples was to tell them to report to John all they had witnessed themselves, all they had seen and heard. They had the evidence. John had been right. Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. He adds to people listening that those of us who accept Jesus for who he is are blessed indeed. John was in danger of stumbling in his faith. The evidence the two disciples took back would have eased his doubts and helped John to cope with what lay ahead of him. When we stop at this point in our reading, it could seem to the reader that Jesus was a bit sharp answering John's question. However, reading on, after the two disciples have left, Jesus turns to the people listening and assures them that John was correct in his calling. He was the messenger sent by God to prepare the way for the Messiah. Sometimes we too might wonder if we are right in putting our faith in God and in his son Jesus. When life is difficult and problems that arise that we feel we cannot cope with, we might ourselves question God. Does he really love us, really care for us and want what is best for us? We can ask questions like this when we are seriously ill or someone we love is ill or dies, when finances are a problem or when the world is plagued with a deadly virus we can't control yet. We think short term and forget that God sees the bigger picture. He does care for us and in his own chosen time, he will work out all the problems. We have the evidence in Jesus, both through his earthly ministry and through our own relationship with him now. Sometimes we just have to recognise where God is at work. I believe he is at work enabling the scientists and medical experts develop vaccines in super quick time guiding medical staff as they carry out their caring work and guiding decision makers as we are informed of ways we can keep ourselves and others well. God is at work through many people in this way, both in battling COVID-19 
and in dealing with many other diseases. Where human knowledge and skill ends, God takes over according to his plan for us. When we experience doubt in God, it can be helpful to remember the words from Isaiah, which John will read to us now. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 45. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I the Lord do all these things. You, heavens above, rain down my righteousness. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide. Let salvation spring up. Let righteousness flourish with it. I, the Lord, have created it. For this is what the Lord says. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Let us pray. Give us, O God, something of the spirit of your servant John the Baptist, his moral courage, his contentment with simplicity, his refusal to be fettered by this world, his faithfulness in witness to the end. So may we be heralds of Christ and his kingdom and make ready his way to the glory of his name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you know us so well. You know when we feel doubt in your almighty power. Be with us in our times of doubt. Help us to see and understand the evidence that you are indeed the one true God who loves everything that you have made, including each one of us. As we prepare for a Christmas unlike any other, keep us mindful of your presence in whatever way we can celebrate, once again, the birth of the Christ child. Amen. Amen. Loving God, we praise you that the end of COVID-19 is beginning to get nearer at last. We thank you for the skill of all involved in the production and deliverance of the various vaccines to combat it. May all countries work together to make the world safe from this virus and to ensure that all people have the opportunity to benefit from vaccination wherever they live. Keep us patient as we travel through these dark and cold winter months towards a brighter future. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church here on earth. Especially we pray for your church here in Sutton as we go through the process of appointing a team vicar. You know who the right person for this post is, and we trust in you to guide their thoughts and decisions over the coming months. With this post, we shall be sharing more closely with our Christian brothers and sisters at St Anne's Rain Hill, and we pray for all who worship and work there in your name. Amen. Amen. Lord God, you know the praise and concerns each of us carries in our hearts. In a short time of quiet, we bring these to you now. We bring our prayers together by saying the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. 